Hey, hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to check in with everyone today and see if you were getting ready for winter because winter's coming and it's gonna be cold and everybody is concerned about high, high energy costs and how we're going to stay comfortable and cozy with cold weather coming and everything being so expensive. There are some simple things that you can do that will help increase your comfort level. I spent many years living in an old drafty house in Kansas where the wind gets everywhere and we learned a lot of tricks on how to stay warm and cozy even in the face of adversity. And so I wanted to share some of those ideas and some things that I've picked up along the way in different places to kind of give you some ideas of things that you might be able to do to help improve comfort in your home without breaking the bank. Obvious things that they will always tell you is, you know, um, replace your appliances, you know, get more insulation. Those things are wonderful, but they really aren't possible for everyone for whatever reason. Maybe you rent and you can't insulate and all that stuff for a property that you don't own. These things are ideas that you could even use if you rented a property. One thing I do want to recommend for everybody is using your ceiling fans in the summertime. A ceiling fan, you can actually um, raise your temperature by about four degrees just by using a ceiling fan to keep air circulating. And a ceiling fan just costs a few pennies an hour to run and can really improve the comfort level. Now, most people are aware that it works in the summer, but also in the winter time, you can reverse the ceiling fan and have it blow clockwise and it will actually pull the air from the ceiling down to lower levels. And since heat rises, that's gonna give you improved comfort because it's gonna keep the heat where you live down a little closer to the floor. So use your ceiling fan. If you have a window unit air conditioner as opposed to central heat and air, make sure that you wrap that puppy with plastic and cover it on the inside so that there are no drafts. Um, or you could even completely remove it from the window and cover the window entirely. Get that draft out of, out of the house because those drafts are going to make you miserable and there's just no reason to. To do that. If you're fortunate and have a central furnace or a furnace of some type, you want to be sure and do your routine maintenance, have that furnace serviced. For some reason I had trouble getting that out. But you want to have someone, a professional, come out, take a look, check everything out, make sure it's all okay, and do any routine maintenance so that you don't have any nasty surprises down the road. While they're there, you could have them checked all of your ducting, central heat and air units. Uh, you know, sometimes we get squirrels, sometimes we get mice. Just age can affect the health of our ductwork and little cracks and loss of insulation can really reduce the efficiency of your central heating and air. Dropping your temperature on your central heat and air unit by about 10 degrees in the winter time can actually save you like 10% of your annual heating costs. And while it's maybe not practical to drop down to 62 degrees or 52 degrees or whatever all the time, maybe you can reduce that thermostat while you're sleeping or while you're at work so that you can have it a little higher at times when you're home and actually um, not have to pay for thermal regulation that you're not using. And a good way to do that is a programmable thermostat. Not real big on necessarily just the smart thermostats, but they do make programmable thermostats that you can use and you can just set them to automatically raise the temperature shortly before you come home or automatically drop the temperature about the time you go to bed. And that way you don't have to mess with it. It just happens automatically and you get to enjoy the benefits. Back to your furnace again, you wanna be sure and change those filters every single month because if those filters get clogged, that drag reduces your energy efficiency. If you have an electric hot water heater, or even if you have a gas hot water heater, I guess, drop that puppy down to 120 degrees. And if you can, wrap it with a, they make a thermal blanket type device that you wrap around your hot water heater. That helps to improve the efficiency of your hot water heater. When you take a shower in the wintertime, 
open that door and let that heat out into the house. Humidity and warmth really are important. A lot of recommendations are that you have a humidifier in the winter because you're doing so much to dry the air. So use that shower moisture along with the warmth to help warm the ambient temperature throughout the house. And on that same note, you don't want to use your exhaust fan in the bathroom. You don't want to use your exhaust fan in the kitchen if you can avoid it, because that's just sucking your hot air right out the wall. So avoid those things. If you don't have a good airflow in your home, for example, if you have furniture blocking vents or return air or whatever the case might be, you want to move that furniture around and make sure that you're not blocking any vents. On the other hand, if you have unused rooms that you're not using at all, and you want to shut off the air to those rooms, that's an option too. You know, close those rooms off. Don't heat and cool a room that you're not using. Just be aware you don't want to completely shut off a room that might have plumbing in the walls or in the floor because you don't want it to drop too low and have your pipes freeze. That won't save you any money if you end up having to have a lot of repair work done because your pipes froze. Check for air leaks around your windows, under your doors, around outlets. An easy way to do that is a candle. You can just light a candle and watch if the flame flickers. That's going to let you know that there's air movement there. Um, another really easy way is an incense stick. You know, you light it and it has the little smoke tendrils that come out and you can see where the air is moving very easily that way. So that's a really simple way to identify leaky spots where your air is escaping or where cold air is coming in. For drafty doors, like underneath the door, you can actually get a draft dodger, you know, the little rolls that you slide along the door. If you don't have access to that, you can use a rolled up towel and put in front of the door, just something to block that draft. They make a socket sealer, which is a little gasket that goes behind your outlet covers for your light switches and your electric outlets. That insulation, just that very small amount of insulation and wind block will tremendously help with keeping you comfortable. That was something when we were in Kansas, the wind was so pervasive that you would get drafts blowing in through outlet covers and it was just miserable because if you were sitting close, you were just in that draft and you never could quite get comfortable because you constantly had cold air blowing on you. And the same thing with your windows. Inefficient windows greatly increase the cost of your heating and your cooling too in the summer, but, but your heating in the winter is what we're talking about right now. So you want to look at your windows. If you have windows that are drafty or older or not insulated, you can put plastic or bubble wrap over those and very easily stop that draft. And, and another simple way to stop that draft is by using your shades and thick curtains. You can get blackout curtains or heavy curtains that you can use. If you don't have curtains, you can use an old blanket. I mean, whatever you have to do to stay comfortable because you want to stop those drafts from getting into the room where you are living. Now, one thing about if you cover your windows with plastic, be sure and use a clear plastic because on in the daytime, if you open those curtains up and get let the sunshine in, it's actually going to help increase the ambient temperature in your room. So at night, you want to close everything up, shut it down, keep the warmth in the house. But during the daytime, let the sunshine in. It actually will help to keep you more comfortable. Dress for the weather. We're spoiled because we've gotten so used to central heating and air conditioning that I know a lot of people, even in my family, will wear shorts and summer clothes even in the winter. And you know, if you're going to look at lowering your ambient temperature, you're going to have to bundle up. So learn to love your socks, learn, learn to love your warm, cozy uh, flannels and fleeces and just get in the habit of dressing in layers and bundling up and do the same thing to your house. Um, you know, add fuzzy rugs and, you know, thick throw blankets on your sofa and flannel sheets on your bed. Those are, again, simple ways that you can increase the comfort level. Take advantage of warm beverages, coffee, hot cocoa, hot tea, uh, 
hot cider, anything like that is going to help you to be more comfortable. It's going to help you to feel warmer and just less uncomfortable. So instead of having an iced beverage, grab something hot. Think about heating the area that you're in. In other words, drop the overall temperature and maybe use a space heater or a fireplace if you have an efficient fireplace or a, a wood stove if you have that in the area where you spend the majority of your time. And that way you still are comfortable, but you're not paying that astronomical utility bill for heating areas where you're not spending your time. At night for your bed, you can add a flannel blanket, a wool blanket, electric blankets to your bed, put a heating pad on and warm the bed up before you go to bed. Those are simple, simple things that you can do that will help to improve your comfort level while you're surviving winter weather without breaking the bank. Because right now with everything being as expensive as it is, we all have to look at ways that we can reduce where we can. And while none of us wants to freeze and none of us wants to be miserable, sometimes just working a little smarter can make a huge difference in the overall cost of things and still not suck all of the pleasure and enjoyment out of day-to-day -day life. Um, so some things to think about. What's your favorite energy efficiency tip for winter time? Leave me a comment and let me know what that is. I'm very curious to see how everyone is preparing for winter weather right now because it's right upon us and it's time to finalize those plans and get everything in place so that we can survive it happily, comfortably, and thrive right on into 2023, which is right around the corner. If you found anything useful in this video, leave me a like, a comment, and subscribe. Talk to you soon.